Is music school worth it? Yes, no. Maybe. What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I've been talking about this topic for what seems like forever. I thought I'd said all I had to say on this topic years ago, but after seeing an article that had blown up online, I headed down the music school value proposition rabbit hole, and this time I went deep. Before diving in here, I wanna point out this is really US specific. So many other countries have a quite different funding model for music school, for school in general. I think the best place to start for this thorny topic is my backstory. So let's go back in time to 1994. Here's what I paid in 1994 when I started at Northwestern University. I thought this was highway robbery at the time and footing the bill for this was a huge stretch for my middle-class parents. The other option on the table for me was the University of Minnesota. Here's what I would have paid for tuition at the University of Minnesota in 1994. By the time I left Northwestern in 2000 after getting my bachelor's and master's, here's what tuition had risen to. That's a 43% increase in those six years. Tuition at the University of Minnesota had gone up. Doesn't look like much, but that's a 30% increase. Okay, let's just look at that four-year degree I got, 1994 to 1998. Here's what I paid at Northwestern. Here's what I would have paid at the University of Minnesota. That's not counting room and board, however. So for room and board, Northwestern, here's what I paid. Here's what I probably would have paid at the University of Minnesota. So let's add that in and look at the four-year degree costs. Northwestern, what I paid. University of Minnesota, what I would have paid. Now that's not entirely fair because I did get scholarships, although they didn't do merit-based scholarships at Northwestern, back then at least, they only did need-based. So I got just enough to make it work barely. Okay, you can probably see where I'm going with this, but let's fast forward to 2020. Here's what that same degree at Northwestern costs, and here's what that degree at the University of Minnesota costs. Paying a quarter million dollars for any undergraduate degree at any point in time seems like madness to me. But look at those University of Minnesota numbers. Sure, they're not like Northwestern, but they're still into the six figures. Again, I'm not accounting for scholarships, financial aid, that sort of thing, but that is the sticker price. Think about it. This leads me to probably an obvious question. Should somebody pay six figures to go to music school? And more specifically for this moment in time, should someone pay six figures to go to music school during the middle of a pandemic? To dig in deeper on the topic, I sat down with Zach Finkelstein and Dana Lynn Varga, who co-authored the Impossible Choice article. A degree costs a whole heck of a lot of money. For a lot of people, it may not have that value. I call it the pipeline. It's still insistently, persistently prescribed by the academy as the way to do it and so and and i have feelings about that i turned to jason haheim who's the principal timpanist of the metropolitan opera orchestra he was trained as a scientist and worked in biotech for a decade before landing his gig at the met i think a fair question to ask if you see someone like jason get to where he is is do we need this music school thing? It used to be that, you know, you could pursue a music education, you could even get a master's degree, and you could do so without like bankrupting yourself and your family. And of course, this is not just music. Like the cost of higher education has become unconscionably high in virtually every sphere, but we don't have the same sort of filters that you will have for like law school or like an MBA. Let's start by zooming out and thinking about what the purpose of music school is exactly. Typically, music school degrees break down into two general categories. For the sake of simplicity, let's think of these as academic and trade programs. The way I break down those two categories is academic jobs don't have any clear job associated with them other than teaching that same thing at another school. Whereas trade degrees can be tied more directly to a job like playing an orchestra, being a jazz bassist, sound engineer, music teacher, that kind of thing. Some schools have a lot of overlap between these two categories, which is awesome. Awesome. And some degrees don't neatly fit into these two categories, like composition. I want to focus on those trade degrees and thinking about music school as an apprenticeship program. The general consensus is, for music performance majors, the most important thing is who you're taking private lessons from. If you survey people who find success, again, whatever that means, in music performance, you'll find that the majority of them come from a small handful of schools. There are a limited number of slots at these schools and competition is fierce. Those who get through the gauntlet and into these schools find themselves with a cohort of similarly driven students. And through working with their teacher and spending time with that similarly driven cohort, they're putting themselves on a path that's much more likely to result in a successful career, again whatever that means. Does this mean that unless you get into one of those small handful of schools, you got no chance as a performer? Of course not, but it's a tough misconception to break. If the reason you go to music school is to study with that private teacher, 
What's the point of all the other stuff? This is a tricky one, and I think we've got a few topics on the table here. Number one, what does a person get out of a traditional college experience? I know that for me, those four years taught me how to live on my own, function as an adult, develop some personal responsibility, and just more broadly educate myself, both in terms of music and life. I am 100% convinced that those four years made me a better person. And if I just remained in my hometown in South Dakota working a nine to five job, I don't imagine I would have developed the intellectual curiosity that led me to opportunities, that led me to talking to this camera right now like a weirdo. After thinking about these muddy topics for years, I've come to the conclusion that music school is a beautiful thing, but consider the cost. I also connected with David White, who's a theater musician in New York City, and he left his Berkeley program years ago to go into full-time performing. We can give you all of these skills and all this information. You can go to the best schools, but at the end of the day, it's you. You're the only person that can be accountable for you. The greatest benefits, I think, for me of going to college were the social benefits. The in-person, the meeting the new people, the experience in the new city. Could I have gotten that without college? Yeah. Would I have been likely to at 18? Probably not. So thinking about this music apprenticeship model, does that require a college environment? No, if you wanna eat, sleep, and breathe your instruments, you can do that. And it's easier than ever with all the tools and connectivity we have these days. Now, does music school make learning your instrument more convenient? Almost certainly. At music school, you're surrounded by similarly driven students. Or you are if you picked your school right. You've got practice rooms, you've got instrument lockers, you've got a co-working kind of environment with people all focused on achieving similar goals. You have built and structure to your day, there are a ton of advantages. Is it cheaper to just throw out the idea of music school and study on your own? My gut reaction is of course it's going to be cheaper. And while that might be true if you're just thinking of the private lesson and that's it, there's so much more that goes into learning an instrument. Really though, I think music schools come out a bit stronger in this scenario than you might expect. If we go back and look at those four year tuition costs at Northwestern University and the University of Minnesota, let's vastly oversimplify and say that the only value from that degree are the those weekly private lessons. Typically, students get about 30 lessons in an academic year. Let's forget about room and board costs because you do have to live somewhere after all. And let's just focus on taking that tuition and breaking it down to a per lesson amount. That Northwestern number seems absurd, of course, but that University of Minnesota number, sure, 500 bucks seems like a large amount of money for a lesson, but a lot of those faculty members are in the Minnesota Orchestra or the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra. They're probably charging a few hundred dollars for a private lesson anyway. And really, it's insane to pretend that you're only getting 30 hours of value per year out of your college experience. There's just no way that that can be true. I hope that's not true anywhere. So let's be at least a little more charitable. Let's say that the studio class at least gives you some value. Most studio classes are two hours a week, but let's be real pessimistic and say that you're only getting an hour studio class and you're getting an hour lesson per week. Well, now the math looks different when we look at those 30 lessons per year. While Northwestern's price still looks a little steep, the University of Minnesota is looking downright reasonable. So let's be a little less cynical. Let's just say there's gotta be one more hour per week. Orchestra, ensembles, some bit of music theory or composition, something like that that's gonna benefit you. Let's say you're really getting three hours of value. And this is still a very bleak outlook. Let's just say you don't care about anything else. You're getting that lesson experience. You're getting that hour studio class. And somewhere in all those other experiences, you're getting another hour of benefit out of that degree. That University of Minnesota degree, that looks like a bargain now. And even Northwestern's looking pretty reasonable. This is also not factoring in scholarships, and as soon as you throw that into the mix, the value of music school can look pretty good. Thinking about the critical importance of scholarships led me to Trevor Jones of the Scholarship Roadmap to dig into that topic. I think what becomes problematic about doing the math, what is the price of building a community of people? And of course you could say, well, yeah, you can build a community wherever you want. Awesome. How many people do that? The final topic I wanna to touch on today, should you go to music school during a global pandemic? While I've talked to a lot of people that have decided to take a year or a couple of years off, I've been heartened at looking at some of my colleagues that have really thought outside of the box and used this moment to do things that they were hoping to do anyway with their private teaching studios. There are also some great examples of people using this moment to innovate in their teaching. I connected with Nicholas Walker of Ithaca College, who has completely reimagined his lesson model. And he's confident that many of these changes are here to stay. We just finished our fourth week of classes here, and already through these videos, I've had the most spectacular insights into the way my students work. Not only do I understand how they're working or not working, but I can reference the video and help them understand why habits are not 
or are or are not informed and what approaches might work better. I also spoke with Susan Cahill of the Lamont School of Music at the University of Denver about how she is reconfiguring senior recital options for her studio. There is a composition track where you can combine bass playing with, with your composing. There's a multi-instrumental track, which that's one of my favorites because I play a lot of different instruments. I mean, I always, I've always said one of my best early bass teachers was my piano teacher. And because she's the one who taught me basic musicianship concepts that you can apply to any instrument. So if someone is interested in either performing on more than one instrument or even just exploring enriching their bass playing through another instrument, um, I'm all for that. I think that's awesome. So there's that track. Then there's a chamber music track, which of course is something I also do a lot of. The chamber music track is something that actually really speaks to something that we do get a chance to do if we're lucky and that we can create much more easily than we can create a solo career for ourselves. Then there's a, a traditional orchestra audition track, which I love. I love teaching that more specifically. And then there's also a not-for-profit track where you can combine your ideas about what you want to do with your career in the entrepreneurial world with your bass playing. And then the last one is pedagogy and studio creation. Thank you so much to all the people that contributed their time for these interviews for this video. It really means a lot. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.